All right, we are live. I am super excited. Been waiting for this one for a while. Um, I'm joined now by Amy Lortz. Uh, Mark will be joining us in just a moment. Uh, they are the owners of the Common Brew here in Mason. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Um, well, you brought. You haven't shown the audience yet, but you brought over a couple lemon heads, and and uh, you know, obviously. You are right in the heart of, of downtown Mason, and, um, and and obviously, you know, if you drive through Mason, you can't miss it. Tell everybody where you guys are located, Amy. We are at 126 East Main Street. 126 and, East Main, okay. And the, um, the landmark that we always use is Whippy Dip. We are catty corner from Whippy Dip, and everybody knows where that is. Yeah, that's awesome. So I... What I always do is, is we, I, I started this, this, this show just as more of a, an opportunity for, you know, um, for local business owners to kind of share their story with, um, with, with, you know, people that live in Mason essentially. And so what I want to do is I always start off these interviews with um, just finding out a little bit about, you know, the business owners about you guys. And so why don't you just start off by kind of telling your story? Um, well, I am a small business consultant and I do bookkeeping and accounting. So that is um, uh, my per, my professional history. Okay. Um, Mark is a hey. um, project manager. Um, and we, we've lived in Mason now for 15 years. We have a daughter, 22 years old, in college. Um, and, you know, she... What was it? She was a sophomore in college. And we just decided we're going to do something new. Yeah. Here we are. So yeah. how about you, Mark? How about you? What's your background, man? Uh, well, I've got uh, about seven or eight years of home brewing, brewing experience. Uh, I started with a home brewing kit that Amy and Maggie bought me um, for Father's Day, you know, in 2011. Um, so as far as small business and brewing, that's about it. Otherwise, I've been in the corporate world for 19, 19 years as of today with a, a company I'm really? with. So, so this all started from a home brewing kit. Are you kidding? No, that's Father's serious. Day. That is freaking awesome, man. So they bought you a home brewing kit um, and you just fell in love with it. Yeah, I started out doing some uh, extract kits, which is the basic way to get started with home brewing. Uh, usually, I use a turkey fryer two igloo coolers and a couple of drywall buckets uh, for the home brewing stuff. Um, and then kind of just graduated from extracts. I took a class down at Listerman's to do what they call all grain brewing, which is basically where you're selecting all your malts by hand and kind of developing your own recipes. Uh, and started doing that about four, maybe five years ago and had quite a number of beers that just went over very well. And with lots of feedback and lots of friends testing the beers, uh, came to realize it was, you know, more of a hobby or more of a passion than a hobby. So we just decided to take the leap. Wow. So that, there's a lot to unpack there. So talk about like how you, you know, obviously you, you said it became more of a passion than a hobby. And oftentimes that's the way it happens. But for you, talk about, talk about like you and your family, talk about your transition from, hey, we're just going to do this as a hobby to, hey, you know what? I think we're going to open up our own place in downtown Mason and start brewing beer. Uh, well, it's we, we. I got to go serve somebody. <laughs> You're good. Um, it was kind of a weird situation. We, Like I said, I've been working in the corporate world for pretty much my entire professional career. And when it when Maggie went away to college, Jamie and I were kind of looking for like a change of style, change of lifestyle. So we initially were looking to just do a small business of whatever type we could get our hands on and just kind of test out the market and see what we would be best at. And uh, a friend of mine owns a very well-known restaurant in the area and he had a private event one night and one of his customers asked me to bring up some of my home brew just to have something different at this private event. And the, I brought a keg, I think it was a sixth of a barrel, which is approximately two cases of beer yeah. up to this party. And it, it, they tore it up in like 25 minutes. I mean, everyone just loved it and drank it. And my friend looked at me and said, it's time, man. I mean, this is, if you were going to do something, this is what you need to do. And yeah. so it kind of started with that seed of, hey, this is a potential idea that we could do as a small business and as a couple um, to build a life, if you want to call it that. 
Um, so I, I went up to the Warren County SBDC, which is this small business. Can't remember the D and the C, but um, it's basically it's a taxpayer paid service that the Warren County offers to help small businesses kind of get off the ground. Sure. So I walked into this guy's office with uh, you know just a notebook of ideas of what we wanted to do. And through, I think he said last count, 75 hours and countless coffees, uh, we came in with a with kind of a business plan and kind of a, a go forward idea with how we should get this done. Uh, Mason has has a brewery right now, 16 lots, which is right down the street from us. Um, that's been doing very well for the past year. Um, we decided we probably got full bore at it back in January or February of 2017, uh, and it took approximately a year for us to find a building, get the financing set up. Um, it's just Amy and I uh, that are financing this whole thing. So you can imagine the stress that that causes to a family. Um, but with the help of countless friends um, and countless contacts, uh, we finally found this place in downtown Mason, which is the downtown quarter where we wanted to be. Uh, and we held out. We had several offers on some other places, but we really wanted to be in the downtown corridor because one of our main tenets for this business is to create a sense of community and a sense of identity for Mason as a downtown mm -hmm. for brewing and the beer community and just kind of a place that we can start building a nightlife, which is desperately needed in downtown Mason. Agreed. So this section of town was where we were targeting because of proximity of friends and other businesses that we were looking at. Our hope is, is that with us opening and several other businesses around us that are more entertainment, then retail that will start to kind of build a nightlife in downtown Mason for people to enjoy. Yeah. So it was a no brainer to get you guys on the show because, you know, um, unquestionably, it's one of my favorite places in all of Mason. And I love the idea. Um, I, d I actually didn't know that. So, you you know, that was enlightening to me to 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 hear that, you know, as a byproduct of this, you know, we're looking to bring in, uh, you know, other businesses here in Mason to try to develop this downtown area. And I think, I think that is a, um, a common thread when talking to people, um, especially business owners in Mason and also consumers, right? I mean, consumers, you're providing a value to consumers that just hasn't been there. Uh, and, and we think people are crying out for that, right? We, we, we understand that right now, you know, um, most people have to go either to uh, Cincinnati, right, or or uh, north to Dayton, right, to to find a good brewery. And you're saying, uh, or nightlife for that matter, right? And you're saying, no, not we don't have to do that anymore because we're you know we've created a great place where people can come enjoy um, great craft brew and food and each other, right, right here in Mason. Absolutely, and that's that's the goal. That's one of the reasons we came up with the name, the Common Beer Company. The idea is that we want to create a sense of community uh, and neighborhood when, when it comes to going out and being able to walk instead of having to drive somewhere or having to travel, you know, a good distance to go to someplace out at night. Uh, we wanted to create that kind of environment in, in Mason and, and not just for our business, which of course is, you know, prominent in my mind, but also we've been here for 15 years and Mason, as you said, has been crying out for a revitalization of downtown and entertainment and something to do where they don't have to go very far to get it. Right. We've got some really good breweries within a short distance of here. Um, you know, to, we've already mentioned 16 lots. We have Sonder now down the street. We have Narrow Path over in Loveland. We have Greenworks and Dogberry over in Westchester, all within a five or six mile you know, radius of us, which is fantastic. But we were really lacking that in the downtown quarter. It's, yeah. We have countless customers that walk in here and say, I can't wait for the spring because I can walk here instead of having to drive or having to, you know, get through the rain and the slush and the snow. Yeah. Um, so that's one of, that's the main reason that we really focused on this area of downtown. Um, we've got some great opportunities behind us as well, city owned property back there that they're hopefully getting some plans set up to do something there. And, there's some of the businesses and the, and the uh, buildings that are in the area that are already starting to turn over into viable evening activities. Um, so we wanted to be at the forefront and kind of help start the spark, if you want to call it that. And we're already seeing some uh, people getting ideas of things that they can do in the area. Yeah, well, you definitely are, man. You guys are at the forefront. And um, for those who haven't been to um, your website, I included a link to your mission trailer 
which I watch, which is on your website, which I would recommend anybody who watches this uh, take a look at. It's just the YouTube link, uh, which uh, is also on your website. But um, because I think that that kind of um, you talked about building community and 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 the things that go behind that. I think that you know the video uh, will encompass that. Uh, I think that the video was was uh, done in very good taste, and and people should should definitely watch it. I'm curious, so for you guys, um, what when you thought up the common brew and, and you guys and you moved into this building, what was your with, with the consumer in mind? What 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 should the consumer or what was your idea of what the consumer should ex expect when they walked in the building there? Yeah, go ahead. Um, our goal was to create a true neighborhood bar. Um, no one walks in the door without being said hello to. Um, we make sure that if there's someone alone at the bar, that they're going to meet someone else sitting at the bar. Um, we want everyone to feel welcome and to feel comfortable here. And we were like, as we were, before we were opening, we were talking about it. I said, my dream would be that a guy who just finished laying a tar roof covered in just dirt and tar can come in here and sit next to an exec from Exotica or PNG and have a beer together and, you know, it not be uncomfortable for anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. Within our first week, our plumber came in and he had on a cutoff t-shirt and covered in God knows what. And um, a guy came in and sat a, a seat away from him in a suit and they sat there and talked and it was like, they'd known each other and we were all talking with them. And, and I was like, I did it. That's what I wanted. I wanted people to feel comfortable here. And it didn't matter who you were. I want everyone to feel comfortable here. And then our, the space that we got lends that, as well. Um, it's a smaller space, smaller tap room, um, very comfortable, cozy feel to it. Um, we have a really neat backdoor patio that we've been able to take advantage of a little bit since we opened just because of weather. Um, but the back patio is also something that we're creating an environment of community and sharing stories and sharing experiences with people that you don't know. Like one of our main goals is if you don't walk in with somebody when you walk into our place, you're either going to meet somebody you know, or you're going to walk away having met somebody new. And yeah. we're seeing that happen every night here, which is fantastic for us. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, um, I'm a, I'm a small business owner as well, and and I think that I always think, you know, what do what do what do you think? You had this idea or this vision of what you wanted to create, and now you're starting to see all that come to fruition. What does that feel like for you guys? <laughs> Exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it's success. She's yeah. she's absolutely right. I mean, we we have a ways to go. We have processes that we can improve and experiences that we can improve. But it is an amazing feeling when you're sitting at the bar. And uh, the best example I have is last Sunday. I was here. I was working the bar by myself. I had four disparate couples come in and sit at the bar, and they're talking with one another. You know, with the couples. And then I started talking to one couple and turned and pivoted my attention to another to draw them into the conversation. And the next thing I knew, all four couples are talking about things going on in their lives and things that they're seeing around Mason. And the very last woman in the couple looked at me and she said, this is really cool. And I said, this is exactly what I wanted. And that's why I'm being quiet. I'm just letting the conversation happen. And without too much effort, it just happens. here. And that's what we wanted. And that is an amazing feeling because that's why we did this for the community and we're seeing yeah. come to fruition. Well, you know, Mark and I have lived here for 15 years and we are walking distance to downtown. So we've been, the Wildflower Cafe has been open up for almost 11 or 10 and a half years now. And we have been regulars at the Wildflower for about nine and a half years because we can walk there. And not, I mean, not only that, they're awesome, but we can walk there and we would walk to the PI and Petrelli's and Aponte's and all these places. But we always said we wish that there was somewhere that was like a bar that you could go and just hear good music and just sit and talk to friends. And it wasn't a restaurant bar, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like a place to go adulting. And 15 years ago, we would have never dreamed that we were the ones opening that place. <laughs> yeah, that's got, that's got to be pretty awesome. I mean, that that that. 
for, for you to have that, have had that idea. Uh, and then you were actually the one that opened it. I mean, that's, that, that's pretty amazing. So talk about like, where do you guys get inspiration for your brews? Like what, what, do you, what, where, where do you guys, I mean, do you get it from other beers or do you get it from, does it just, are do you, are you making this stuff up? Talk about that. It's kind well, of a combination of both. Um, we have a very creative um, head brewer, absolutely. Justin Cheney. He's very creative, very passionate. Um, we have a lot of beer loving friends who throw out flavor ideas and we build on that. The other, the other inspiration we have is a lot of local ingredients. Um, we're trying to utilize as many of the local options that we have. Um, prime example, we have a friend of ours who came in with a 22 pound bag of soft red wheat. He's a farmer and he just said, hey, have you ever thought about doing something with this? And we're getting ready to do a test batch with using that soft red wheat. Um, we've been using, utilizing localized, local honey for one of our beers as well. So inspiration for beers, it, it's very similar to cooking. You, you get inspiration from a lot of the ingredients that are around you and a lot of the feedback you get from people of things that they want to try. Um, we've got one on that I've never heard of before, ironically called a common ale. It's out of California. Um, and my brewer and I were talking the other day and we both were like, why have we not made this yet? So we're getting ready to brew that next week and have that on tap in the next week or two. Um, so inspiration can come from anywhere, mostly from ingredients and from people telling us what they want to drink. Right. How many beers are you guys currently serving? Right now we have um, eight beers, nine at nine as of tomorrow. And then we just tonight opened up uh, what we're calling the not so common tap, which is going to be a test or an experimental tap. Mm -hmm. uh, we make small batch beers, about two cases a piece. Um, so we have a tap now that's going to house those and we're going to put them on, get feedback. And as soon as that one blows, we'll put the next one on. Yeah. Uh, so right now we've got, we, we started with seven, we got up to 12. We're, uh, we're down to about nine right now, but we're reloading as we speak. We, business has been really good. And so we're learning how to keep up with that business uh, as well as how to make new and different flavors of beers. Yeah. Now, are you, you guys are doing seasonal stuff too, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, just, uh, we just had Son of a Nutcracker, um, which was our pop, most popular beer to date, um, blow last Friday. And that was a seasonal winter ale. Mm -hmm. But we're um, bringing it back. But it is yeah. coming back <laughs> next week. Um, and then we do, uh, we're loading up some spring beers. Um, as we talk, we're going to do uh, some Pilsners and some lighter beers uh, coming into the spring. But um, a lot of it is going to be dictated by what we have available to us. Uh, yeah. My favorite beer to make and to drink is made with the, the uh, pawpaw fruit, which is um, an Ohio, the Ohio State fruit. Um, the pawpaw is only ripe one month out of the year. So wow. we can't get more seasonal than that. Yeah. Um, we do have, I have some leftover. Uh, from last year that I kept frozen that we're making some small batch stuff. But to get it onto the big system, we're going to have to wait until September uh, mm -hmm. when it's ripe. We'll get some fresh stuff and get it going from there. Nice, man. So what is what is the consensus favorite, you think? What do you, what beer do you guys serve the most of? Um, Blonde. Creamy Blonde. Uh, Creamy which, Blonde? Yeah, that was the first beer we actually served at an event um, hosted over at the Wildflower. Uh, we've had that on tap ever since, and by yeah. far that's our – that's our best-selling beer. Yeah. Son of a Nutcracker took it over, but it was a small batch, so it went quickly. Yeah. Um, creamy Blonde. And then the Lemonhead, your favorite beer, is yeah. coming in a close second. So Yeah. I, I would – you know, I'm sure most people have heard of um, uh, Summer Shandy, and so I was a big fan of Summer Shandy. And so to, to get to drink the Lemonhead um, certainly was, a, was even more of a treat for me and just to know that you guys were making that here locally. Talk about the food. Um, you know, that's – not a lot of people think about food when you go into a, a brewery, right? And but right. you guys um, and some breweries don't even make food, um, but you you guys make food. So talk a little bit about what inspired the food menu. Well, we we don't make the food. We don't have a kitchen. Um, we have partnered with Comets Pizza next door. Yeah, and they created a menu just for us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, well, we wanted everything to be easy. And um, kind of pretty much we wanted most things to be uh, finger food. Yep. Yeah. Um, and a nice variety. And we're going to change it up a little bit where we have some ideas for some new stuff to put on there. Um, but in house, we make uh, amazing soft pretzels. Yeah. And beer cheese I made with to, the creamy blonde. Yeah. I yeah. had to cut myself off. 
so I'm eating way too many soft pretzels. What about the Saratoga chips? Yeah, That's, those are Those good. are made by uh, Comets <laughs> Pizzas as well. Yeah. So I take it you had a lemon head and Saratoga chips. Right? Oh, you know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, those are really good too. Yeah, it's been nice working with uh, collaborating with them. And for our customers, it's a seamless experience. Experience they can order the food, pay for the food. We'll go get it and bring it to them. You never have to leave the table. Yeah. Um, what are you? For them, it's almost we have a kitchen, but we're able to take advantage of a business that's been here for years. Yeah. So they're not open on Sundays, and um, they offer, but you know that's they'd be working a lot of days. So. We on Sundays are um, we have food trucks. Yeah, when we can. When we can, yeah. So for the winter, it's kind of hard to get a food yeah. truck. Um, right. We did find someone who wants to actually wants to bring his stuff inside. So starting in February, we'll have food inside, sir. Basically, kind of catered. It's uh yeah, it's steam tables and stuff. He'll he'll bring it inside. We'll we'll do that, and then yeah. we're already starting to ramp up for when the season goes warm again. We're going to try and get a variety of trucks on Sunday. They'll park right out front to try and draw more people and show that what we have. Um, but Comments has been fantastic with us. Um, Denise and Chris are wonderful people. Um, well, happy birthday, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's been a great experience with them as well. Any talk, talk I mean, any plans for uh, local music? Yeah, we uh, actually have been in contact with several local musicians, uh, a lot of them within walking distance again from here. Uh, that are very interested in coming and playing. We've avoided it during the winter months. Um, again, such a small space. Mm -hmm. We're a little afraid of the, the acoustics that we'll experience. Um, but probably in the next couple of weeks, we're going to give a test run of somebody inside uh, just to see if we can do something before the weather breaks. But once the weather breaks, we're already uh, setting up some uh, one, two, three member uh, bands to come and play out on the back patio. Uh, maybe set up a, a single guitarist out front against all to just draw people in and show them that we, you know, we're going to, you're going to have some fun when you walk in the door. Yeah. Talk, I, what, what do you think that, what's something that I should have asked you that I didn't or, or what, what maybe might people not know about you that you guys could tell us? Well, did you talk about, we serve, we also have wine. We have, did you want to do that? No, oh. I don't think that was his question though. I didn't say anything about us. <laughs> It's fine. Yes, we have wine and liquor options for those that, that well, want wait. to have that. Bobby, personally? Uh, hey, we'll, we'll take anything we can get. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love Netflix. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work. Um, wait, I have to finish this, that whole thing, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have wine, we have liquor, and we have two ciders from a local cidery in Wilmington, Tin Cap. And we carry um, an apple cider and a mango jalapeno, or no, hatch chili cider. Okay. From that. So we do have options for people if they're not interested in the beer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also have obviously a bunch of non-alcoholic options as well. Yeah. So. I'll finish. I'm done. As far as we're concerned, um, you know, we both have two full-time jobs and we're doing this, but this is certainly our passion. Um, we're excited to have the springtime come and we're excited to have people coming out. Uh, we're getting great feedback from locals. We're seeing more new faces than old, which is great because we want to get our name out there and we want people to come in and experience this. Um, but we're, you know, we're looking forward to the weather breaking for to get more crowds in here and more options for people as far as seating is concerned. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm just incredibly excited for you guys. I love the fact that, you know, you're here now and, um, people are catching on. Um, I think what you guys are doing is just fantastic. So just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We appreciate you reaching out. It's, yeah. it's always nice to get a chance to tell our story where we can. Yeah, it was a no brainer. And, and listen, I'm, we're looking forward to the weather heating back up as well. Uh, I think, you know, to, to be able to, to, to just to open up to the patio and, 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 and you're right. I mean, everybody coming in from the community, sitting down to have a, a locally brewed beer. There's just nothing like it, man. It's just a great feeling. It really is. So kudos to you guys. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you, Mike. We look forward to seeing you again. Uh, absolutely, sir. Listen, you guys stay in touch, and uh, I'll, I'll look forward to talking to you real soon. All awesome, right. Mike. Thanks, Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.